Now, what would be our moonshot? A dream where people would say, well, you know, you're crazy to want to do this, but we think, well, we actually have a chance of doing it. The moonshot dream of this 10-year, 20 million euro uh, project is to build an artificial scientist, a colleague, that works with us on reading the literature, doing the experiments, interpreting the data, writing the paper, and that we could have this artificial collaborator as a co-author on one of our publications. So I would want to walk into my office on Monday morning and I would want to hear a voice from my desk saying, hi Frank, good morning. Um, I've read another thousand papers over the weekend uh, and I've, I've written a, a nice summary for you and I think I've learned some interesting things. Now that's an example of how a computer collaborator could compensate for some of my human limitations. So we really want to try to imagine a future in which uh, a machine and, uh, and a human are collaborating and they are complementing each other's uh, strengths and weaknesses. Because a machine is much uh, more able to uh, process data than we are. Uh, we are subject to errors, they are not. But they, uh, they don't have the creativity that we as humans have. If you look at many uh, uh, AI systems today, they are intended to replace people. And I think it is much more interesting to build AI computers that do not replace people, but that collaborate with people. So you should not replace one with the other. You should build a hybrid team where the hybrid team together is better than each of the players separately. Me as a psychologist, I still find it weird being surrounded by a computer scientist. Not one conversation went without making a new idea or how we can interact or how we need each other. My goal is to kind of make a bridge between psychology and computer science. I think the pattern between human and human interactions can also be simplified and then transferred to human to robot interactions as well to be able to also infer about someone's trustworthiness based on the first impression. They also need to be attentive to specific uh, social cues that would be the most predictive or important ones. We as humans learn uh, this by experience with time. Uh, the same way using a, a spoon to steer your sauce in the pan. Uh, there's a lot of steps that you make. Uh, you know that if you will do it with your hand, you will get burnt because the pan is on the fire and it's hot. So we, we have this information uh, and we need to pass this information also to, to, to machines. And that's what machines are not able to do yet. Part of the project is also an understanding what are these values and common sense facts that we need to, to teach them. This helps machines into understanding, uh, giving meaning to data, the same way we do as humans. And I don't want my artificial colleague Einstein to only read the papers, I want to have a discussion with her. So as a real colleague, this hybrid intelligent collaborator should work with me on every part of the scientific life cycle so that, that she can really be a full author on the paper. Now what I do, I come into my office and my colleagues say, Hi Frank, how are you doing? Not today I'm working on this, shall we discuss that? I would maybe expect all of those things to, to happen. Except that now one of the members of the team is a voice on the desk or is maybe a robot. Uh, on a chair, but because we, uh, we try to get these machines to collaborate with us in natural ways, the actual day wouldn't maybe change all that much. We would just be better at it.